Helga Kvitta, Hundingsbana 1 The first lay of Helgi Hundingsbane The general subject of the Helgi lays is considered in the introduction to Helga Kvitta Hjarvartssonar and it is needless here to repeat the statements that are made. The first lay of Helgi Hundingsbane is unquestionably one of the latest of the Eddic poems, and was composed probably not earlier than the second quarter of the 11th century. It presents several unusual characteristics. For one thing, it is among the few essentially narrative poems in the whole collection, telling a consecutive story in verse, and except for abusive dialogue between Sinfjotli and Gotmund, which clearly was based on another and older poem, it does so with relatively little use of dialogue. It is, in fact, a ballad, and in the main, an exceedingly vigorous one. The annotator who added his prose narrative notes so freely in the other Hedergi poems, he had found nothing to do. The available evidence indicates that narrative verse was a relatively late development in Old Norse poetry, and it is significant that most of the poems, which consist chiefly not of dialogue, but of narrative stanzas, such as the first Helgi Hugningsbane lay and the two Atli lays, can safely be dated on the basis of other evidence after the year 1000. The first Helgi Hugningsbane lay is again differentiated from most of the Eddic poems by the character of its language. It is full of those verbal intricacies which were the delight of the Norse scholars, and which made Snorri's dictionary of poetic phrases an absolute necessity. Many of these I have paraphrased in the translation. Some I have simplified or wholly avoided. A single line will serve to indicate the character of this form and complex diction. Stanza 56, line 4. On the horse of the giantess ravens food had. This means simply that wolves, giantesses habitually rode on wolves, ate the bodies of the dead. Except for its intricacies of diction and the possible loss of a stanza here or there, the poem is comparatively simple. The story belongs in all its essentials to the Helgi tradition, with the Volsung Sockle brought in only to the extent of making Helgi the son of Sigmund and in the introduction of Sinfjotli, son of Sigmund, and his sister Signy, in a passage which has little or nothing to do with the course of the narrative, and which looks like an expansion of the passage from some older poem, perhaps from the old Volsung lay to which the annotator of the second Hedergi Hundingsbane lay refers, prose after Svante 12. There are many proper names, some of which portray the confusion caused by the blending of the two sets of traditions. For example, Helgi appears indiscriminately as Ilfing, which presumably he was before the Volsung saga became evolved, and as a Volsung. Granmar and his sons are called Niflungs, Nibrungen, in stanza 50, though they seem to have no connection with this race. The place names have aroused much debate as the locationalization of the action, but while some of them probably reflect actual places, there is no such geographical confusion. And such a profusion of names, which are almost certainly mythical, that it is hard to believe that the poet had any definite locations in mind. Helga Kvitha Hundingsbano In olden days, when eagles screamed and holy streams from heaven's crags fell, was Helgi then the hero-hearted Borghild's son in Brarun born. T'was night in the dwelling, and norns there came, who shaped the life of the lofty one. They bade him most famed of fighters all and best of princes ever be. Mightily wove they the web of fate, while Browland Towns was trembling all. 
And there the golden threads they wove, and in the moon's hall fast they made them. East and west, the inns they hid, in the middle the hero should have his land. And Nari's kinswoman, northward cast, a chain and bade it firm ever be to be. When sorrow had the irfing son, and grief the bride who the loved one had borne. Quoth Raven to Raven on treetop resting, seeking for food, there is something I know. In Melkot stands the son of Sigmund, as half day old, now day is here. His eyes flash sharp as the heroes are, he is friends of the wolves, for glad are we. The warrior throng, a ruler thought him. Good times, they said, mankind should see. The king himself from battle press came to give the prince a leak full proud. Helgi he named him, and Hringstathir gave him. Sofjo, Snefjol, and Sigarsjo. Hringstoth, Hoten, and Himinvanger and a blood snake bedecked to Sinfjolti's brother. Mighty he grew in the midst of his friends, the fair-born elm in fortune's glow. To his comrades gold he gladly gave, the hero spared not the blood-flecked horde. Short time for war the chieftain waited, when fifteen winters old he was, Hunding he slew the hardy whites, who long had ruled o'er lands and men. Of Sigmund's son, the next they sought, hoard and rings the sons of Hunding. They bade the prince requital play, for booty stolen and father slain. The prince let not their prayers avail, nor gold for their dead did the kinsmen give. Waiting, he said, was a mighty storm of Lance's grey and Oten's grimness. The warriors fought to the battle went, the field they chose at Logafjord. Frothi's place, mid's foes they broke, through the isle went hungry Vithrir's hounds. The king then sat, when he had slain Eyjorf and Alf neath the eagle stone, Hrorvarth and Hovarth, hunding sons, the kin of the spear wielder, all had he killed. Then glittered light from Logafjol, and from the light the flashes leaped. High under helms on heaven's field, their burnies all where blood were red, and from their spears the sparks flew forth. Early then in Wolfwood asked the mighty king of the southern maid, if with the hero home would she come that night, the weapons clashed. Down from her horse sprang Hogni's daughter. The shields were still and spake to the hero. Other tasks are ours, methinks, than drinking beer with the breaker of rings. My father has pledged his daughter fair, as bride to Granmar's son so grim. But Helgi, hi, once Hothbrod called, as fine a king as the son of a cat. Yet the hero will come a few nights hence, unless thou dost bid him the battleground seek. Or takest the maid from the warrior might? Helgi spake, Fear him not, though he soon he felled. First must our courage keen be tried, Before unwilling thou fare with the knave. Weapons will clash, if to death I come not. Messenger sent the mighty one then, 
By land and by sea a host to seek, Store of wealth of the waters gleam, And men to summon, and sons of men. Bid them straightway seek the ships, And off brandy ready to be. There the chief waited, till thither they were come, Men by hundreds from Hethen sea. Soon off Staffensness stood the ships, Fair they glided and gay with gold. Then Helgi spake to Hjorleif asking, Hast thou counted the gallant host? The young king answered the other then, Long were it to tell from Traunjor the long stem ships with the warriors laden that come from without into Orvan Sund. There are hundreds, twelve of trusty men, but in Hoten lies the host of the king. Greater by half, I have hope of battle. The ship's tent soon the chieftain struck, and wake the throng of the warriors all. The heroes the red of dawn beheld, and on the masts the gallant men made fast the sails in Varen's fjord. There was beat of oars and clash of iron, shield smote shield as the ship's folk rode. Swiftly went the warrior laden, fleet of the ruler forth from the land. So did it sound when together the sisters of Kolga struck with the keels full long, as if cliffs were broken with beating surf. Helgi bade higher hoist the sails, nor did the ship's folk shun the waves. Through dreadfully did Aegir's daughters seek the steeds of the sea to sink. But from above did Sigrun brave, aid the men in all their faring. Mightily came from the claws of Ron, the leader sea beast of Nippeblund. At evening there in Una Vagar floated the fleet the bedecked full fair, but they who saw from Zvarin's hill bitter at heart the host beheld. Then Gothmund asked, goodly of birth, Who is the monarch who guides the host? And to the lawn the warriors leads. Sinfjotli answered, and up on an oar, Raised the shield all red with golden rim. A sea century was he, skilled to speak, And words with princes well to strive. Say tonight when you feed the swine, And send your bitches to seek their swill, Then out of the east have the eflings come, Gleeti to for battle, to Nippelund. There will Hothbrod Helgi find, In the midst of the fleet and flight he scorns. Often he has the eagles gorged, Whilst thou at the corn wert slave girls kissing. Gothman spake, Hear all the ancient sayings heed, And brings not lies to the nobly born. Thou hast eaten the entrails of wolves, and of thy brothers the slayer been, oft wounds to suck, thy cold mouth sought, and lord in rocky dens didst lurk. Sinfloti spake, A witch in Varen's isle thou wast, a woman false and lies didst fashion, of the mail clad heroes thou wouldst have, no other thou sayest. Save Sinfloti only. A Valkyrie wast thou, loathly witch, Evil and base in our father's home. The warriors all must ever fight, Women subtle for sake of thee. Nine did we in Soguns of wolf cubs have, I their father was. Gothman spake, Thou did not father Finnilir's wolves, Though older thou art than all I know, For the gelded thee in Nippelund, The giant woman at Dorsnes was. Under houses the stepson of Sigir lay, 
Fain of the wolf's cry out in the woods. Evil came then all to thy hands, when thy brother's breasts thou didst redden. Fain didst thou win for foulest deeds. In Dravol wast thou Granny's bride, golden bitten and ready to gallop. I rode thee many a mile and down, did sink thou giantess under the saddle. Sinfloti spake, A brainless fellow didst seem to be, when once for Gognir goats didst milk, and another time when an imp's daughter in rags thou wentest, wilt longer wrangle? Gothman spake, Sooner would I, at Frekestein, feed the ravens with flesh of thine, than send your bitches to seek their swill, or feed the swine. May the fiends take you. Hergi spake, Better, Sinfjoti, the twould beseem, battle to give, and eagles to gladden, than vain and empty words to utter. Thou ring-breakers oft in speech do wrangle. Good I find not the sons of Granmar, but for heroes tis seemly the truth to speak, and moin shimmer, prove the men that hearts for the wielding of swords they had. Mightily then they had to run, Sviputh and Svegbjuth to Sorhemar, by dewy dales and chasms dark, Mist's horse shook where the men went by. The king they found at the courtyard gate, and told him the foeman fierce was come. Forth stood Hothbrod, helm for battle, watched the riding of his warriors. Why are the Niflungs white with fear? Gothman spake. Swift kills lie hard by the land. Mastering's hearts and mighty yards, wealth of shields and well planned oars, the king's host fair, the Irfling's haughty, fifteen bonds to land affair, but out in Sogan are seven thousand. An anchor lying off Nipperlund, our fire beast block, are fitted with gold. There wait most of the foeman's men, nor will Helgi long the battle delay. Hothbrand spake, Bid the horses run to the Regan thing, Melnir and Milnir to Mirkwood now, and Spurtvitnir to Spare and Sheath. Lit, no man seek henceforth to sit who the flame of wounds no well to wield. Summon Hogni, the sons of Hring, Utley and Ingvi and Arth the Old. Glad they are of battle ever. Against the Volsungs, let us go. Swift as a storm that are smote together, the flashing blades at Threkestein. Ever was Helgi hunding slayer, first in the throng where war leaders fought. Fierce in battle, slow to fly, hard the heart of the hero was. <laughs>